From the air, it's the magnificent Mexican countryside. On the ground, it's rugged and inaccessible, an engineering and construction challenge. Yes, as a matter of fact, the word challenge fits well given the conditions. Imagine building a pipeline along mountainous slopes averaging 48 degrees, with half of the route straddling the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt. That's just one of the tests facing the Tamazanchali Extension Pipeline Project. This project was a very challenging project uh, for TransCanada in, in Mexico. The 235-kilometer, 146-mile Tamazanchali Pipeline Extension links natural gas supplies from Mexico's east-central coast to two power generation plants and connects to Mexico's national pipeline system. To navigate the steep slopes, in some cases the, st the slopes had steepness in excess of 45 degrees. So we, we had to look at alternate techniques of, of how to uh, construct and install the pipeline in these areas. Murchie's team came up with two innovative solutions. We had to find ways to make uh, the construction work. Uh, we had a very, very steep slope. Uh, that um, presented uh, a tremendous risk and hazard to, to people and equipment. Similar to a gondola to transport skiers, the three-tower cable crane system efficiently moves tons of steel pipe and construction materials up the 50-degree slope. The gondola is operated remotely to safely hoist loads of up to eight tons up and down the steep, difficult slope that crews have affectionately dubbed Waterloo. Without that uh, system in place, we should be still uh, working on, the, on that slope uh, in a much longer and a much uh, uh, unsafe uh, condition than what we did uh, finally there. So the contractor chose to work directly in the trench on this section, and this has been productive because it is very complicated and we are working pipe by pipe. <laughs> The second major construction challenge was the remoteness of the construction corridor. We had to, uh, to find ways to, to get equipment and people to the right of way and to construct in, in this remote area. When the challenging slopes seemed to present a challenge too great, the TransCanada team got innovative. The second area of innovation that we employed was the drilling of a microtunnel. A 672 meter tunnel was drilled through the mountain using a pipe jacking system along with a remote controlled tunnel boring machine. The rotating cutting wheel excavates the material at the tunnel face. Rock and stones are crushed by the discs of the cutting wheel and then ground down to the appropriate grain size in the cone crusher situated behind the cutting wheel. The tunnel boring machine's rotating cutting head carved a path through the mountain leaving a two-meter diameter tunnel through to the other side. Behind the tunnel boring machine, concrete liners were jacked into place to maintain the tunnel's integrity. Then the actual pipeline was moved into place. We looked at it going around, but uh, you, you had to deviate the pipeline in such a long stretch that from a cost perspective, it would have cost us more, and from an operating and maintenance perspective, it would have cost us more uh, in terms of long-term uh, care for the integrity of the pipeline. That the safest, that the best solution for the pipeline and the routing was to keep it in the same uh, line. Microtunnel was a very innovative and very new technique for, for TransCanada in particular, for Mexico at all. It's the first microtunnel performed in Mexico. TransCanada never used a microtunnel for this purpose in Canada or the U.S. When the rains came, it made that component of the work extremely difficult to do. As if the Mexican geography didn't offer enough of a challenge, Mother Nature stepped in to add her own curveball. 2013 was a very wet year in Mexico including not one, but two simultaneous hurricanes battering the country. Hurricane Ingrid was in the Gulf Coast and Hurricane Manuel on the Pacific Coast at the same time. It rained in the month of September in Tamas and Chali 601 millimeters. So that made construction extremely difficult. The weather wasn't even the final hurdle. 
In this project, we found uh, many archaeological uh, findings uh, and uh, sites. One of the most exciting aspects of the Tamazanchali Extension Project was the discovery of significant archaeological finds. In total, 53 sites were identified, mostly high atop the mountains. These finds required several pipeline route adjustments. Construction on the pipeline began in December of 2012. Along the route, five stations were built to service the line. While the Tamazanchali extension may have been a challenge, the Trans-Canada team expects to take a lot of the lessons learned here and put them to use in future pipeline projects. A lot of these learnings and a lot of our experiences can be brought uh, to Canada and the United States, other areas that Trans-Canada works. Uh, especially the mountainous uh, projects are, that are being planned in British Columbia, uh, Alberta, in Canada. We should uh, be able to bring most of these uh, techniques that uh, were used on this project, such as the cable crane, such as micro-tunneling, and our steep slope uh, practices and procedures. So we're, we're, we're seeing that we're able to transition and move that across uh, to benefit other projects in TransCanada. As Mexico looks to energy reform to bring private investment into the country, TransCanada is well positioned to capitalize on our expertise in constructing and operating natural gas pipeline infrastructure in some of the harshest terrain on the continent. A great project for TransCanada. Uh, this is a great step uh, for the development in Mexico for TransCanada and we're very proud uh, to have built this pipeline project. <laughs>